Hey there everyone, it's Ravindra here back with another video. In this video, we will learn how we can use Dapper with the stored procedures. In this process, we will create a .NET Core MVC app and along with it, we will perform some CRUD operations. In this way, we can actually learn a module of real world project. If you want to learn more about MVC, I have few courses for that. One of them is MVC crash course, other ones are MVC projects. I will put down the links in the description box so you can check out if you want. If you find this video helpful then please hit that like button make sure to subscribe this channel to get more videos like this so let's get started since we are using tapper here so we need to follow the db first approach actually it's not necessary to follow you can create mvc app first then you can come here and create a database but we are going to follow the database first approach so we are going to create a database first then we will create an mvc app Okay, so press Ctrl N and we'll create a database first. So let's create a database here. Create DB, sorry, create database. And let's name it Dapper MVC Demo. Press F5. It will create this database for us. And if we type here use Dapper Demo then we will enter into this database now anything we will perform will be happen in dapper mvc demo database that's it now just create a table create create okay so create okay create table and it will be dbo dot person now id int primary key identity so this column will be identity it means we we are not going to enter any value to it it will be auto generated now here another thing will be name let's name it first name our name will be enough name and where care let's say 100 will be enough and it will be not null next thing will be email and where care 100 not null okay another one will be address and it will be in where care 200 not null press f5 and we are done here so let's type here insert into person values uh, we can write here name address name email address values and one value will be let's say john do email john at the rate gmail.com address will be xyz xyz okay so we have entered a dummy value here so let's add another value here john to one one and name just just type here anything anything what you want add this one okay so if we type here select asterisk from dbo dot person so here we have these two records okay now let's create a stored procedures here few stored procedures here so first one will be add create procedure sp create person and it will take few parameters here First one will be name and work uh, 100. 
then another one will be email and where care 100 another one will be address and where care 100 200 okay begin and so just type here insert into dbo dot person values name email address sorry it should be here values should be here values now we will pass some values to it so it will be name email address okay I just forget here as begin and now it is fine so we'll create some more procedure here let's name it update person and it will also take id and where sorry id int that's it now here we will pass we have to change this query so let's change it update dbo dot person set name equals to at the red name email equals to email equals to at the red email password not password address equals to at the red address and since it's a keyword so we need to put a bracket here okay where id id equals to at the rate id that's our update query sp update person dash, dash yeah everything will be fine so let's create it fine sp get person sp get person and it will take only one parameter which will be id that's it and just type here select a strict from person where where id equals to id and we can also type here dbo although it's not a mandatory okay so we are fine so let's sp get people that's it and remove this where clause from here and we are fine last thing we need here delete person oh, oh sorry i have done a mistake here get people will not take any id so we will remove this procedure so just type here remove procedure or just we can type here remove proc name of proc or procedure remove if i type here dbo then let's see so i am forgetting it so i'm just going to search in a google so here i am getting a link drop proc dbo dot whatever it is and if i go here i am typing here remove that what is a mistake here so it should be drop proc okay so apart from the mistake i need to remove it from here and we will create it again 
so just remove it from here create procedure sp get people as begin select asterisk from dbo dot person press enter okay delete person delete person and here we will pass a parameter the red id int as begin end and delete from person actually we do not delete any record in actual projects but just for the sake of deleting i am going to teach you here so do not follow this approach in real world project never delete any record just just set a uh, is deleted value to the true okay delete from dbo.person where id equals to id id equals to id okay that will be fine so i guess we have created our stored procedures so let's check here just refresh this and okay why i am not refreshing my database anyway it should not be a problem i will reconnect it again and here we have this tap rmbc demo here we will see programmability and here we will find our stored procedures sp create person delete person get people get person update person here you can see that it won't take any parameter it will take these parameters that's it so now we will create a mvc app now so but i want to say one thing when i will create a connection string i will put a dot here in your case that might not be always true so it is my actual server name okay here might be like this sql server so since my server name is simple it does not contain any backward slash sql script thing so i can just access it with this dot okay so that's it let's close it for now and let's remember the database name here dapper mbc demo okay so dapper mbc demo that's fine let's create a new project here and we need to create a new project so just type here mbc let's filter this thing and here we have this this thing sp.net core web app with model view controller create our next button that's fine tapper mvc demo and i'm going to change the location it will be a solution name so we will keep the solution name tapper mvc demo and here we will type dot ui okay so our solution name is tapper mvc demo and project name is this click on next here thought it's on this 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 okay click on next now we have this app but we are going to add another project here for our database operations so just click here and just search here class library and add this one class library click on next and just name it dapper mvc demo dot data it will be our data layer that's it okay so we have created another project here so let's delete this guy from here okay 
sorry i have accidentally deleted this program.cs file i had to restore it from the recycle bin so you do not need to delete this it's a core of our application i was going to delete this class one.cs we do not need it okay so in this project we will in this project tap our mvc demo dot data here we will perform our all db related operations and here we will perform ui related operations like we will perform here mvc app related mvc app related operations so that we can use the solid principle here and we will separate our database from our ui so if in the future we want to change anything to our database part suppose we want to use another database there or we want we do not want to use dapper now i want to use entity framework in future so i can change those things here so that our ui project won't break in future if i make any changes here in the data project so we are separating the things separating our database things here and ui things here One more thing we need to do just right click here in ui project and go here project reference click on this guy and we are fine so let's define a connection string here so type here connection strings con equals to this sorry this data source equals to dot here is a semicolon and initial catalog initial catalog will be our database name so it will be dapper mvc mvc demo that we have created earlier and here we will just type not here here integrated security security equals to true so that we do not need to enter any username and password if we allow integrated security true it is our connection listing and it might give some error in future so it might not be 100% true we will see it in future now we need to install few packages so we will install it from here you get package manager package manager console and you can also install it from here manage package manage you get package manager whatever it is so you can search it here any package suppose we want to install dapper so we will search here dapper and click on this and click on select this option dapper mvc demo data and click on the install button here it is a good option because you do not need to remember the name you can just search it here and you can also alter the version if you want some other version if you are using an older version of dotnet core then it might be it might not be supported for that one so you can change it from here so here we can also see its documentation and we can see its dependencies so it is supported for dotnet 5.0 and it is also supported for dotnet framework 4.x that's good so i guess it's supported by all the frameworks so we do not need to worry about it so another way here that i was talking about we can also install it from here package manager console and we just type here install package dapper but before that we need to change this thing dapper demo dot data so our default project is ui project but we need to install these things in the data so don't forget to change these things i am reminding you once again our default project is demo mvc data demo mvc sorry dapper mvc demo dot ui we need to change it to dapper mvc demo dot data so we will install our packages inside this project so press enter and here 
I am getting a huge error because it's a wrong command. It's a right one. Install dash package dapper and we are done. Another package we need here is this one Microsoft.extensions.configuration.abstraction because we cannot access our configuration file directly in the class library so we need this package to access our configuration file so if we want to use i configuration interface we cannot directly use it we need to install this package and last package is we need here sql data client so just type just press up button and here just try to remove this guy and just type here microsoft yeah data dot sql client because we are using a sql server so we will use here sql client yeah we are done and we have installed all the packages you can double click on this project and you will see here we have installed dapper this package and this package also that's it that's good now we are done so we'll create a folder here let's name it a data access data access inside here we will create our data access class one more folder we will create here will repository but we will create it in future so let's create a class here and name it sql data access sql data access dot cs that's it now here we will just change it to public and here we will write ctor it will create a constructor for us i configuration configuration press control dot and click here it will add this line here that's good and remove these things these are unnecessary thing and in dotnet 6 we can also remove it so it is also an expect acceptable well, let's name it config that's good right click here sorry not right click press control dot and we will get press control dot means period symbol so we need to press control plus this symbol period symbol or dot symbol so press control period symbol here and you will see these options here we will use this one create and assign field config if we click here it will automatically create a field here but we will need underscore here so that we can distinguish both of this okay so we are good here now we have done few steps now we will create our few not few just two methods to access the data from database and we will create here uh, generic methods so first we will use a package here so just type here dapper okay and add this package also microsoft.data.sql client that's it now we will create two methods here and first one will be public async task i enumerable t get data so with this method we will fetch the stored procedure which will return us data either it is a collection of data or it is a single row so if there are multiple rows or there is a single row it doesn't matter we will use this method for both of the operations it is simply returning us a enumerable type of t so it is a generic method and here we are defining a t and p so t is the type of written data and p is the type of parameter so which type of parameter we are defining here so they will be a type of p so here we will define string sp name 
parameters and here is connection id equals to con and we have defined this con here we can see it here con that's fine so now let's create a connection and it will take this thing config dot get connection string connection id so we are simply fetching connection string from here from here or app setting dot json with this line now it will return connection dot query async it is a method of dapper here we will pass the name of stored procedure parameters and command type will be command type dot stored procedures now we will define another method and all the insertion or update operation will perform here so it will take three parameters name type of parameters and a string and it will not return anything so we are not defining here two parameters like we did here t and p so it will just take one parameter t okay so we are same we are doing same here we are creating a connection and we are writing here connection dot execute async and it will take three parameters from us first one will be stored procedure another one will be parameters and command type stored procedures So it is looking fine now so what we can do right now we need to create an interface so i will just type here i sql data access right now we do not have any interface with this name so we will press here control dot or control period symbol and here we will have this option generate generate interface i sql data access in a new file so i will click on this option and let's see we have this interface here okay now what we will simply do here just copy this thing good and paste it here and another thing will be this one and paste this guy here press semicolon here and we are good so what we can do right now we can go here in the program.cs and we need to register this service here so we will go here and we will just type here builder dot services builder dot services dot add transient now just type here i sql data access and it will add this line here comma sql data access We are good now. We have added this service to our whatever it is. We have registered this service. So we are done here and we will create a repository now. Repository or repository, whatever it is. So let's create a folder here and name it repository. Repository. And we will create person repository here so it will be person repository dot cs so, okay that's good public we will create i person repository we'll create interface also so press control dot generate interface in a new file that's it so now we can also register this service 
because we need to register it in future so we will just register it right now so i person repo z3 press control dot and add this it will add this line here and just change it to person repository it's good so we can close it now we do not need it and we will define some methods here but before that just remove these chunks here they are unnecessary packages and just do this okay so it look much more cleaner let's leave a space here okay so right now we need to do one more thing here before moving further we have to create folder models models and we are going to define some models here so first one will first model first folder will be here domain and here we will define our database models so just type here add a new class and here we will define person dot cs and just type here public and remove this junk from here i do not need it and yeah that's it public person id that's good string name and we had another thing will which was email and last one will be address and these will be in the label so put a question mark here that's it and these fields will be required so put a required here required here and here actually it is not required i guess so that's it so we are done here now move to the repository section now open the person repository class and here add these packages using tap mvc demo dot data dot data access and models dot domain from here we will access the person class now here just define this field i sql data access underscore db and now define a constructor we will assign this parameter to this field here okay now what we need to do here first we will create a method called add async and it will return a boolean value and take a parameter take a object of person as a parameter and now we will define a try block here and we will write this line await dot db dot save data and inside this we will define name of our stored procedure now we will pass this dynamic object from here it is not any strongly type it's just a dynamic object with these properties name email and address because we need these fields or these parameters in our stored procedures and since it's a add async method and we are using a save data method which do not return anything so if we look here we will see that save data method taking a name stored procedure and it will take a parameters from us okay so here we will just return true so that we will get notified that we have successfully added data here we will handle exception and in the catch block we will return a false here we can log our exception if we need now let's add another method here and name it update async and it will be the same as the previous one but we can pass a whole object here because it will also need an id project sorry id parameter in the previous previous method we are not passing id here that's why we are not passing the whole object but here we can pass the whole whole object that's it so now let's go here return true and add a 
catch block let's define another method here delete async and it will be the same as previous one but it will take this object with property id only return true from here and in the catch block in the catch block return false that's it so let's go here and here we will execute this method get data and here we will pass here person and dynamic because person will be the written type and dynamic will be the type of parameter and here it is a name of parameter and here it is a dynamic parameter that i was talking about so we are passing a dynamic object here and it will return it will return a result but in the result we will get the list of data so we need to write here first or default and now we will define get all async it will be the same but we will not pass any data here you can see that we are not passing any data here we are just passing here query and it will return a whole list here we can see that it is returning enumerable enumerable type of person okay so we have defined this section perfectly so let's go here and let's expand all of these methods one by one so just go here and we can see it is add async method which is taking sp create per sp create person it is a name of stored procedure here we are passing a dynamic object because we need these parameters in our stored procedure name email and address that's it in the update section it is a name of our it is a name of our stored procedure we are passing whole person whole object here person because it contains all the properties we needed in our stored procedure since we do not need to pass your id so we cannot pass the whole object here but here we also need id we also need to pass id so we can pass the whole person here now here is a delete async person delete async and here is the name of our delete person no sorry name of our stored procedure and we need to pass a parameter here with name id so just pass a dynamic object here with or an anonymous object here id equals to id that's it and here here it is a get by id async and here it is the name of our stored procedure get person and it will take this it will take a parameter from us with name id and we will return a filtered result because we need only one data from here but it will return a enumerable so we need to fetch one object one record from here so that's it for here and here we will we will create the crane we will create a create a get request here and we are using this stored procedure here and we are passing it as a query here and we do not need to pass any object but we have to pass something here so we will just create a empty object here so we just pass the empty object here that's it now we need to define this thing in our repositories so just add these references here and add this method this method this method this method and the last one this method so that's it so it is our data part and we have done our data part so now we can move to the ui section and there might be any error in that class but we will see it in future so let's move here and let's run this project and let's see what is going on here we haven't run this project till now so if we look at this this is our default project so if we click here in home page and click on privacy page we will move here let's see how these things are happening here and where these things have defined so here if we go into our program.cs let's see what we can find here can we find anything here anything interesting let's go here 
in the bottom of this file you will see that here is this middleware app dot map controller route name is default so it is our default route controller equals to home action equals to index so that's how by default we are going into this index path so let's put a breakpoint here so i can prove that it's an index page of home otherwise we will not know how how this page is getting loaded so let's let's click here and let's enter here now you can see that we have stopped here so it means by default it is executing this index page and it is returning a view that's it and let's go here let's go here and so just define here and type here hi but it will not reflect right now we need to debug our project for that if i change it here i'm sure that okay yeah you can see we are not seeing any changes so we have to build our project again or run our project again so let's run it now you can see that all of these changes here we are seeing hi that's fair enough so let's close it and let's make a mess in this project so first of all we are going to delete all of these things because they are taking unnecessary size and we are not going to use these file in this project sorry in this tutorial so but before let's see what it is what is here here is a site.css file and here you will see site.js file and here we have bunch of libraries like bootstrap jquery jquery validation dot jquery validation and an unobtrusive validation so these files are used in client side validation so if you need client side validation then don't delete these files otherwise you can delete them so i'm just going to delete all of them all of them i do not need them so just delete these guys okay and yeah that's fine now here here is our layout.cshtml file and here is our layout has been defined so i can move this guy from here 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 okay anyway just remove just remove all of these things from layout.cshtml now we do not have any layout.cshtml file okay that's fair enough now let's remove this validation file we also do not need this and okay it's okay it's okay to define this error page it's not doing anything bad view imports.cshtml so do not remove this thing it is mandatory sorry necessary for our project we start dot cshtml in this file we define our layout page so currently we are using this layout dot cshtml file as a default layout so it is defined here okay so let's see how we can define our own design here so let's move here in the browser and here we will type bootstrap 5 bootstrap 5 and here it is the official website of bootstrap so just go there and go here in this section the start section so here is our starter template just copy this guy and here go to the shared layout.cshtml page and paste this guy here okay so let's just change its type of title to dapper mvc demo that's good 
let's just just leave it here hello world why do we leave here hello world just remove this guy from there okay okay so let's see am i using the correct one yeah so it's uh it's good but let's remove these comments from here and from here so that's it now let's see what we can do here just type here is render body and it will render our content pages for us we do not need this right now so now let's try to run this project okay so let's run this guy right now we are not seeing here anything let's see bootstrap is working or not so what we are going to do here we are just gonna go here in the component section and let's find a nav bar here so it is our nav bar so let's copy this nav bar just copy let's see which one will be good so let me find i guess this one will be good enough so let's copy this one copy go here and paste it here so let's let's go here and we can see that this thing is working fine and right now why it is working because i am using a hot reload here so if we are making any changes to ui we can use this hot reload option so that we do not need to build this project again and again okay so here and let's go here let's remove these links first so let's remove this guy that's it and just copy this about let's name it about and we will create another page another link here which will be a person which we will define in future so just type here home slash index and here home slash home slash about so code changes were applied successfully it is saying so just go here and we can see is our home page it is our about which is not right i guess go here in home section and where is our about page we do not have any about we have this privacy page so let's change it to privacy okay so let's name it privacy privacy whatever it is home slash privacy so if we click here in privacy we can see this privacy policy fair enough one more thing we can do here is we can put this render body in div so just type here div class equals to container it is a bootstrap class and it will make everything centralized so now you will see that this thing will come in the center automatically everything will come in the center automatically we can do here one more thing we can create a padding so just type here px padding from up and down and let's add it to four so now we can also see a privacy sorry padding here i guess px4 is right so why i'm not getting any privacy hot reload on file save 
so we will see it later i don't think i don't know why it is not working let's make it px px6 let's see it's not working anyway my3 okay p y4 so for now leave it like that we will see it later why it is not working if i remember i will see it later anyway it's not a it's not a big deal let's close this layout we are done in the layout section and we have defined our nav bar oh, very fine so we need to go there again layout and we need to change this name it should not be a nav bar it should be our dapper demo it's, it should be our brand and it should be this let's see okay so let's name it home slash index home slash index okay so i guess we have done this thing here we have defined our nav bar okay so that's a quite a bit task but it's a fun doing things from this scratch let's remove this and let's change it to welcome h2 welcome now we need to create our own controller here so we will create a one we will create one so let's create a controller here so let's add a new controller and let's name it to first let's name it person controller so it will be a mvc controller empty here and let's create a let's rename it to person controller and remove this one from here and that's it that's it so it should be a sync controller a sync method and it will be a sync task ix and result add so this method will be our add method it will be our get method and we need another method here which will be a post method so we will just pass here person press control dot person control dot anyway i don't know why it is not working add person and here we will type http post because these two methods have same name so we need to define a method type here so p e r s o n and yeah now it is working so we are good here we will define functionality later first define our methods here so next thing we will create here public has sync why not copy all of these things again so here we will define our method http it will be a get method and it will be a display all display all it will be display all and we will define one method here which will be get by id it will take int id that's fine and here we will define same same functionality here so we have copied these things so let's minimize this so that we don't get confused here we have this add 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 and we need to change it to edit and it will take id and we need to change it to edit also which will take object 
that's it edit edit add 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 edit one more thing has remained we need a delete function also so let's copy this guy and paste it here just change it delete okay now now what should we do so from let's define this delete first so from here we will return return redirect to action and name of name of here we will define the name of action so we will return it to the display all display all that's fine and here we will define some code but first here we need to define a constructor so just type here ctor person controller and here we will define i person repository and it will be a person repo person repo press control period symbol and create an assign field i'm going to put underscore here so that we can distinguish these names so just type here this and we are good to go let's move here let's define the delete function first so where just type here where delete result equals to person repo dot delete async and here we will just pass id and it does not matter if it is a true or false we will always return to the redirect to action we are handling exception there await okay so that's it now define this display all function so just go here and let's just go here display sorry display all where persons it should be people where people equals to person repo dot get all async and it's an async method so we need to define an await here so type here await and here we will pass this people to the view okay so let's define this display all function first so just right click here and click on add view it will be a razor view razor view empty or razor view razor view will be fine so okay so right now we need to define your view name which will be display all and it's fine template will be empty create a partial view no use a partial page no because we have defined a layout page because we have defined a layout page in view start.cshtml5 so we do not need to define it here and it is also saying us leave empty if it is set in a razor view start file and we have set it in a razor view start file so we do not need to define layout page here so click add and since it is it needs a scaffolding so it will install a package from NuGet which will be microsoft.visualstudio.web.codegeneration.design so it right now it is installing this package from the NuGet so it will take a while for this after that it will create a view for us now we can see that it has generated this space so we need to remove this junk from here and we have to pass here model model and what we need to define here so let's see here what we are passing to it so we are passing our view this people and it is a type of high enumerable person so we need to define here i enumerable person so it is a model that we are passing to our view 
Now we can loop over it, but first we need to define a table here. So just type here at three people list and here just define here a div with class my2 that's it so i'm using here my2 i'm going here in the layout section and here anyway i do not need to remove anything from there i was just got confused okay now here we will define the table so just type here table class equals to table table stripped and something like that here we will need a t body but before that we need a t head after that we need a t body and here we need a tr t r inside that we need a th where we will define name and here we will define name email and address that's it and here we will do the same thing but we need to define a for each loop here so we will define here for each where person in model and here just type tr because we're gonna loop over this whole row here we will define td and inside td we will pass this person dot name here we will pass person dot email here we will pass person dot address we need one more row here so just type here th and name it actions inside that we need a few things we need to define two buttons here first thing will be action link and here href equals to hash we'll define it later just name it edit and here just name it delete and here we need to define class equals to btn btn alert or uh, yeah alert will be okay we'll do the same thing here and define class btn bt btn btn danger okay so let's see how things are going in the view first of all i'm getting an error here so let's see why i'm getting error here so let's close this thing edit edit and let's comment all of these things maybe that's why we are getting error here so let's comment these things let's go here and let's run this project let's see do we getting error again we are getting error namespace person could not are you missing a directive or assembly reference and here is the same error so i guess problem is not here problem is here because we are not defining where this where this person is coming from so i need to define here dapper demo it is our project name dot data dot person okay so let's delete this first type here dapper mvc demo dot data dot models dot domain dot person so we need to pass a whole reference here that's why i was getting error okay so i'm not getting any error right now so let's run it again let's see let's see what is happening here 
so first of all we do not need it for now so let's close this guy since we haven't defined any route for person display person so we need to type it manually display all so if i type here and i'm i am assuming that i'm going to get error okay so here is the error in a connection string okay that's my bad is saying that you are doing something bad here double t it should be single t integrated security and meanwhile let's 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 go our layout.cshtml page and here define this link so just type here person slash display all or just define some readable name so i'm going to capitalize or making them capitalize letter it should be person okay so it does not matter if it will be in all small case or it will be in this combination of small and capital case it does not matter either it can be a either it can be a whole small case or a whole upper case or mix of it it does not matter because it's just a url it will find this route in your router table run it so again if i click on this and i am getting again this error and it probably with the connection string so if i go here and where appsetting.json and just try to write here encrypt true i don't know why i will i am getting this error in dotnet 7 before dotnet 7 in dotnet 6 or dotnet code 3 this connection string was just fine but in dotnet 7 i need to define some more some extra information like this encrypt equals to false i guess it is a encrypt equals to false so anyway i can check i can check this connection string here so i'm going to i'm going to go into my guest dot github dot com and i'm going to go here in my guest files so here dot net cli cheat seeds i hope i will find something here if i go here and okay so i'm not getting any any information there so it might be this one ef course equal server and yeah here we have this this thing dot net 7 connection string anyway first of all let's try this encrypt thing so if i yeah that's fine so i had to write here encrypt equals to false and it solved the problem so going there was unnecessary i can skip it now and here we can see that we are also getting some values from the database but our design is not working as we think table class equals to table and okay so i no now i got it why i was not getting the class so i need to remove this layout equals to null and let's run it let's run it i guess i need to build the project again i don't know why this hot reload option works or sometime it does not works it's a mystery for me sometimes it works like a charm sometimes it's look pathetic okay anyway what we can do for that so let's go here now now it's working fine but here 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 this edit btn let's just name it n4 or we can can we change it to success 
is it a class s u double c it should be double c so let's try to hot reload it hot reload on file save now it will run on every file save so we should be fine here edit and delete green and red that's a good combination john doe john doe one now what we are going to do here first of all let's add a button here here let's add this button and let's add btn info and my2 so we are going to create some margin from top and bottom now here let's name it add more and here we will define person select add first we need to check here what are the names so we have this name add we have this name edit and we have one name here delete so we are going to define all of these things here so let's close this guy i do not need it right now do not need this one also here person slash add and oops yeah fine remove this hash and define here edit define here id equals to at the rate bt sorry the red model sorry not model at the rate person dot id okay so let's copy this guy not cut just copy paste it here and it should be delete that's fine so what we have to do right now what we need to do right now first we need to define few of these things and here first of all we do not need this method it's unnecessary we need it in web api projects but not in mbc project so first of all let's 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 uncomment these two methods. That's fine. And here we will define some functionality. So just type here try catch exception ex. And here just return view. Sorry, it is fine. Here we will define temp data dot msg equals to success successfully added it is a case of success and here it is a case of failure and we will just type here could not added okay and just return redirect to action name of add now here we will define some functionality so where just type here where add result okay but before that we need to check one thing if if we need to check the model validation if model state dot is valid it means it is not valid then we will return a view from here with this data person otherwise just type here where person add person result equals to await await person dot add person sorry await it should be our repository so person repository dot add async here we will pass a person 
that's it and if it should be a bool so we can define here bool bool add person result so if add person result is success then we can write this successfully added otherwise otherwise We can just type here could not added. It's looking good right now. So let's add a view here. Let's add an empty view and let's name it add. Let's name it add. That's it. Leave it empty if it is set in a razor. Okay. Use a layout page. In the previous section i have unchecked it that was wrong we have to check this we have to leave empty if it is set in a layout sorry in a view start file we have to empty this text box use a layout page so it's good let's wait because it is scaffolding right now so we need to wait for it and i'm getting sleepy it's taking too much time it's taking too much time generating code and although I can cut it with video editing I guess I would not cut it so it's finally generated that's a bit success okay first thing we need to pass here a model which will be a uh, which will be a uh, first of thing first of thing let's 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 go here let's go here and here in the person section display all section and 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 and, and. let's remove this thing and i'm going to do some experiment i don't even know i can do this we can do this in mvc so if i write it here at the rate using if i write here using dapper mvc demo dot data dot models dot domain then yeah then we do not need to define it here so uh, our view is looking much more neat and clean that is working so we can just type here person now now it's detectable so that was a success and since i do not use mvc too much so i don't know about these stuffs too much and yeah that's a fact microsoft sp.net core so we have defined this line here so that we do not need to use this code everywhere in our view before that before that sorry where we were yeah here so here and before that we need to write it like this but since we have added this section here so we do not need to do it like this it will also be fine okay well first of all what we need to define here first of all we will define here is add person that is just fine s2 or s3 s3 will be fine add person and here we will define s3 here we will define this thing okay and we need a button here so just type here a href equals to person slash display all class display all and here will be class equals to btn btn primary btn btn primary and here display all so this button will move to the display all section this button will move us to a 
display all section okay and one more thing here we need to define m y2 so that we can create some margin from top and bottom now we need to do here uh, we will create a class we will create a div here but before that we are gonna we are going to create a form form equals to asp action equals to add it is it is our form and here we will define some fields here so first thing will be div class equals to form form so let's go here let's let's check this thing in the bootstrap so let me plug my charger so let's go here in the bootstrap section we do not need to remember everything we have internet so let's see how can how we can design a form so here in the component section components we will see a form somewhere accordion breadcrumb button group card hello card carousal close button navs okay i'm in the wrong section here is a different section for form here forms and we can see that here is our form control so we can simply copy this or we can do something else we can go here in the layout section and let's see can we find anything okay i guess not oh i am searching here the form control form control anyway we can just copy this thing this thing also this thing also will be fine so let's copy this thing and go here and paste it here and label four just remove this thing this thing we just need this one mb3 margin bottom three okay email address email address not email address it should be a uh, name name type equals to text we do not need this id field we also do not need this placeholder field so what did i get from there nothing only this class mp3 anyway class equals to form label this one also so here we can just type here asp4 asp4 equals to name and we can copy this guy and paste this guy here so it is our name controller name control we will do the same with this email but 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 we also need here one more thing asp sorry span asp validation for name and here this one so just copy this guy paste this guy here and just change it to email everywhere copy this email 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 that's it do it same for but we need a text area right this time so we will define a text area okay so just copy this guy and here rather than this email or text input text sorry not email other than this we will define this text area here and we will change this id 
we do not need it and we will paste our ASP4 control ASP4 here okay so we will use the same class here div mb3 okay fair enough and we will create a submit button here so yeah just type here button type equals to submit class equals to btn 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 primary okay and just name it to save that's it and one more thing we need also define the error of success matches here so here we will define this temp data to temp data msg but we need to check that if it is null or not so we need to define a if condition here so just type here if temp data if temp data msg doesn't equals to null it doesn't equals to null pass fine and copy this guy paste this guy here okay so it seems much better right now i hope we are doing everything right form spxn equals to add and it's so it looks okay so let's run this guy so let's go here in the person section and click on this add button we can see this form so let's type here and just name it to let's just name it jane and here 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 is a problem name it should be a email and and it should be address that's a problem with copy paste we need to be very careful when we are doing copy paste control c control v control c control v is a good option but it also give us lots of error okay so just here type jane let's name it jane so it will be a jane and j n e j n at the rate yahoo.com and here just add is just add address three and something like this okay so it is saying successfully added but if if i just add and save button so my validation is working fine one more thing i need to do here here I just need to define a class text danger and have to do same thing here and same thing here since but we we also remove this thing because our address is not validated maybe in future if we validate it then it would be good that we have already added this section here okay so let's see we can see that this thing has immediately changed with the hot reload and here hot reload option is working very nice okay so go here and go here perfect this thing also working fine so we need to work on this edit section and delete section now first let's go here let's 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 copy so just copy and just paste and save a lot of time hopefully you will not get error in the future by doing copy paste so it will be edit and here you can see that 
we have added a view for edit section now we can uncomment this guy and we can go here go to view and we have already added it we can remove it we also need we do not need it and we can remove it from here also that's it and let's let's let's, let's move here so change it to edit person edit person but in edit section we need to define one more input also so so let's copy this one and paste it here it would be id and it would be a uh, hidden how okay. so edit person or uh, just change it up delete person update person looks much better and everything will be same so let's close this guy and just close this guy okay so here we need to do some changes here first we need to find a person so we'll just find a person from person repo person repository dot person repo dot find person repo dot find not find here to get by i think it should be fine by i think anyway and it should be it should be a weight so yeah pass it here hmm. it is look fine so we are getting data from the database and we are passing the whole object person here so when we move here this whole object will be received here and everything will be displayed in these fields so id will be displayed here name will be displayed here email will be displayed here and address will be displayed here it should be address okay we need to change it here also so that's a very bad thing copy and paste okay so here nothing need to be changed except i have changed this one address actually it will not give us any error but it would be nice if its name should be relatable so here asp4 address is saying that this label belongs to this address if i type here email so it would feel like this label belongs to this and actually it will not create any error but it's not a good it's not a good thing why would we define a label of email here in the address section so anyway apart from the gossip move to the actual logic so let's go here in the controller and here just type here try if type a negation sign here model state dot is valid return a view from here that's good model state dot otherwise we will do it would be a person not a model otherwise just type here update result equals to what we can do here yeah it is giving me a nice suggestion person report dot update async if update result if update result is true then let's see okay it is a waitable oh we are fine then we will type here temp data msg equals to updated success fully and we can define here temp data msg equals to could not updated okay and here we can also check the null so if person equals to null we can return to something 
we can throw an error from here throw not found something like that it should be written not found but but we need to handle it somewhere so i'm not going to do right now so let's comment this guy anyway here could not update it and here in the cast section exception ex I'm data dot this and in the cast section we will just return a view with person and here we will do the same in the else condition we will return to a view and here from here we will return to a action so return redirect to action name of display all so on the successful update we can go to the display all section or we can return a view from here so it's totally up to you so whatever fits fine so i guess let's 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 return a view so we can return a common view from here that's it now we do not need these extra bases we can remove them update successfully not updated could not updated and return view okay so it's look it looks also fine now here we need to go to the display all section and here we can we can do something like this on click we can this we can define some javascript function so on click we can return window dot window dot what we say confirm confirm and here we can check that are you sure return window dot confirm are you sure so it will pop up a confirm dialog box if and it will ask are you sure to delete are you sure to delete this record something like that and if we click on yes then it will move to this this delete action otherwise it will not move there okay so here we have implemented the delete functionality and edited functionality edit functionality and if this attribute value is enclosed in quotation mark the question mark must be must match and i don't know so just run it it's just a warning so let's click here and click on add more and here not here we need to click on this edit section that's working fine so let's 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 name it to max and max at the rate redif.com just click here on save and it is successfully added and 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 here i have done a terrible mistake you are seeing this link we have been moved to the add section and do you know why it is happening because it have created a new field here and that is happening because of copy paste hmm so here go to view and change this add to edit just just that so that was a mistake 
so let's see let's go there let's remove this to michael and my z h a e l that is gmail.com address something like that let's save that and we are fine we have seen here that updated successfully let's go here now it is updated it is updated so it's mm. good so let's let's see what is happening here and it has deleted a record but it did not ask me to do it so what can be the problem here so let me see what is going on here so i have missing i am missing this quotation mark okay so let's see now it is asking me so let's remove let's remove the chain and you can see that our so just name here jack jack at the rate redif.com and address jack address let's save it successfully added we can go here and we can see that we have added this record and let's add its address so jack address double one and let's see that let's move back here and we can see that we have updated this record and let's try to add this guy and are you sure no i'm not sure are you sure yes i'm sure and we have deleted also so we have successfully implemented crud functionality with the help of dapper and with the help of stored procedure and you can see that how fast this thing is working because entity framework is little bit slow if you are not using it correctly but dapper is much faster so that's it if you find this video helpful then please hit that like button if you haven't subscribed this channel you can also subscribe it i will see you next time